Hello, everyone, and this is Kara Newman, and this is the Saturday, Saturday Human Colony Hucalo webinar with Jim Charles. Today, we're going to be broadcasting live from Sedona in the Ascension workshop that's taking place there. So I'm just going to turn it over to Jim's room so you can get a good visual of them. In Hello. our room, however, in our uh, Google room, we have Salish Sheer. Christine, Leela, David, and who else do we have? We have, that's it, that's on our room. So who do you have in your room, Jim? I'm gonna have them say their names because there's a lot of them here. Okay. I'll start over here with uh, Merrick. 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 Merrick, Pam. Pam. Uh, Deborah. Deborah. Uh, Angie. Angie. Stephanie. Stephanie. Leon. Leon. Eva. Are you? Eva. Uh, Eva. Chloe. Chloe. Jake, Liliana. Okay. Lily Liliana, <laughs> Mary, oh. Mary. Mary. Mary, Donna, Donna. Spenny. Spenny, and Max. Yeah. Wow, you have such a full house, and we've got people on YouTube. So welcome, and tell us exactly. So you're in Sedona, and tell us what's happening. We're for all of us that are there to enjoy it with you. Uh, we're having a wonderful time in Sedona. It's uh, the energy here is, is amazing. The messages that are coming through are really um, interesting and wonderful. So, and I think everybody's having a good time. How about it? Yay! At the good, end, I'm at glad. the end, everyone needs to come on camera so we can see them if they want to, and they can all wave goodbye. That would be awesome. And I know that there's a few more people that are not here yet. David and Danny isn't here yet, and I'm a, a couple more, but we're going to start without them anyway. But Okay. Because we got it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so tell us, uh, so today you said you're going to be talking about? Well, actually, I asked them for the best message to come through, the best uh, the best information that needs to be, uh, uh, to be presented to come through today, and I think that's what it should be all about. Okay, perfect. Well, whenever you're anybody ready, then take it away. Oh, anybody want to request somebody to come in? Elijah, first of all. Elijah. Oh, okay. Grendel. Grendel. Spin yes. Oh, did you? No, he's just. Anybody else? Heinlein. Carlos Castaneda. Heinlein. Robert Heinlein. What'd you say? Carlos Castaneda. Oh, Carlos Castaneda. Oh, Deborah and I say cry on. Cry on. Arcturians. Okay. And Fendorian. Fendorians or Arcturians? Fendorians or Arcturians? Okay. <clears throat> All right. We'll see who comes. And um, everybody have a wonderful session. And um, I just am feeling so good here in Sedona. The energy here is uh, like nothing that I imagined it would be. It's really quite energetic. So uh, It holds on, doesn't it? It really penetrates that energy. Yeah, it really is. Actually, uh, some of people told me that when they take their shoes off, they can feel the the uh, floor vibrating. So that's that's the kind of energy that's here. So wonderful. I'm going to do a little bit of a meditation and then we'll see who comes first. And all right, I'll talk to you all later. Greetings. I'm Elijah. Welcome, Welcome everyone. I Welcome just wanted Elijah. to speak a few moments on community. This is a time when we need to come together as a community, where we need to bond together in friendship that is true and not just superficial where you say that you have acquaintances, but the acquaintances become true friends. 
Now, I know sometimes this is not possible. Sometimes you do not have time enough to spend one with another because of work or responsibilities to get to know each other well enough to call you well, yourselves true friends. But when you have things of this nature, you have friends online and friends in the room, you can learn to bond and put your energies together in such a way that they will become lasting friendships. They will become energetic thought process one to another. They will become warm thoughts that you will always remember. Now, keep in mind, your energies are all specific to you. And God has created you all originally to be very different. And that is the beauty of it. You can learn so much from those that are different from you. You can learn so much from those that have experiences that are not like yours. You can learn so much from listening to the emotions that are behind some of these experiences and some of the information that was brought forth by some of the things that have happened to others in their lives. These can also help teach you how to be stronger and better people one with another. Love is the word of the day and the word of the decade and the word of the century. For love is the greatest of all binding emotions. It's the greatest binding glue between people. Do not let yourself be ripped apart by negativity and things that are not to be. Remember, no one is perfect, but everyone needs love. And everyone needs friends. And everyone has their own opinion. So listen to it. Do not judge it until you understand where it comes from. They might have lived a life totally different than yours. And so have concluded things in a very different way. But as you share your information, eyes will be opened. Thoughts may be changed. Experiences between the two of you, three of you, five of you, ten of you, may come into alignment in some way. Maybe you may not agree with everything, but you will understand it. You may understand it better and be able to say, you know, that's not how I feel, but I understand why you feel that way and be able to get through and be able to build on community that way. And when I talk about community, I talk about reaching out into the world as well. There are so many out there that are lost and lonely. There are so many that need a helping hand. There are so many that need a smile whenever you come into the office or walk down the street or see them wherever they are. There are those that do not get that. There are those that are feeling that they are by themselves completely. Have you ever felt that way? I'm sure some of you have. And I'm sure some of you still do sometimes. But when somebody smiles or brings some energy of positivity to you, it makes your life a little better. Instead of somebody bringing anger or judgment or whatever to you, it makes a your life a little bit more difficult. But be that one <clears throat> that will bring some light to the world, some light to the room, if you will. There are some places where the room has no light. It may be filled with neon, 
but there is no heart or soul, light or emotion that is positive there. So be that positivity. Before you even walk into the room, I know some of you know that your workplace is not always positive and that you have to deal with certain people that are not always the friendliest or always the most forthcoming with good and positive information. But before you walk in, say to yourself and ask God to be with you and ask God to be your example so that you may make it through the day in a positive way. So that you can make it through the day and perhaps change the atmosphere of that room. Can you change the atmosphere of a place? Absolutely. If you refuse to let it get you, you can overcome it. Remember that. Remember, you can overcome. You may not think so, but it is within your grasp. Because why? God is so powerful. He can do anything. So let him. Is there any questions before I move on? Um, there is a there is a question in the room. I don't know if you're taking general questions or only about what you've just spoken about. Oh, any questions at all? Okay, Leela has a question. Okay, I have a personal question and I would like to share with you also my realization about perfection through... Yes. Uh, Okay, so my first question is, how is my energetic energetic prediction for 2018 if it comes to my progress energetically? Can you say something about it? Yes. As it stands right now, all projections that you have are fine, and they are positively accurate. But remember this, as time moves forward, things will change a little bit, so you may find that some of your predictions will change slightly because people have changed their decisions from what they are now to something else. Or something has changed and has come in your pathway that was not there before. But at this moment, you are perfect with your predictions. Oh, I, I was, I am not making any prediction. I rather was asking you if you can see anything for me for this year happening. Yes, I, Energetically. I see that you already have some thought processes about that. And that's what I was thinking. Oh, I got I was it. Thinking, oh. Yes, okay, you already I, have thought processes about this year. And so far, they are very accurate. Okay, wonderful. Not so long ago, I, I was having a wonderful talk with Lord Vishnu. He is the head god of the gods of the Hindu gods. And we were talking about perfection. And I was, uh, after that, thinking deeply what the perfection means to me. And I would like to uh, share with you because you are a deep person and you will maybe appreciate. The definition of perfection comes from the energy of love. Love is perfect. Mm. To access perfection, we serve with all for all. Therefore, I do not seek to be perfect. What I seek is to love in a perfect way. That's it. My dear, you are al already perfect. <laughs> Continue. Well, that was the real realization what I would like to share with you because uh, I love deep thoughts and I know that you are the same. So I was just sharing with yes. you the realization. What perfection for me yeah. mean? Excellent. Let me tell you something about everyone. Everyone in their perfect state is right at the moment. You are all perfect right, right now because God is in your soul and has made you who you are. At this moment, you are perfectly who you need to be. Now, does that mean you will not change? No, it means that greater perfection is out there for you. But you have to understand, if you take away all the negativity within you, your perfection remains. 
and it is there no matter how hidden it is. Perfection in love because you all do have love with you naturally. But sometimes you experience it in different ways. Some feel more that love is a romantic feeling. Some feel that love is a bonding feeling. Some feel that love is a different kind of feeling than you may think. But love is there, and it is there to bind us all together in perfection. And as we move forward, we help one another move in that perfection and gain our greater perfection one to another. Does that make sense to you? So far, each time we are listening to you, everything makes sense because whatever you say, it comes from the heart center. So we do not have a problem at all to understand you. Excellent. I understand that. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Shir has a general question, but not on the subject, but I think you said go ahead and ask his questions as well. So Shir, of go course, ahead. Of course, of course. Hello, Elijah, how are you? I am very well, and yourself? I am very well indeed. Um, I want to ask you about the super moon that we had on the first or before that. Uh, for a week I had strange feeling and fatigues and minute afterwards all gone and clearly it's something that have to do with that. I know it's something very special that happens every 150 years and people spoke about it. Can you tell us what was going on, uh, what was going well, on behind the scenes? Um, let me put it this way. This super moon was different than any other because of all the other things that were going on with it. You see, the energy of the super moon is a specific kind of energy that is released to your planet from the sun as it changes with the intermingling with the moon and reflecting from it. The energies from the sun and the moon together create this uh, wonderful new energy as it comes through to you. Now, it was a blue moon as well, which is also significant. But there were so many other things happening at the same time with this, this super moon that it changes what it would normally be. So it is a greater energetic change than it was 150 years ago because now you have the coronal mass ejections. Now you have the energy from the center of the galaxy. Now you have coronal mass minimum. If you know, if, look it up and you can see that. Now you have the axis uh, that are tilting a little. Now you have the reintroduction of magic into the uh, Earth realm from the beginning of the ascension, which is 2012. So all these energies put together create an, a whole new kind of scenario for the planet. And as they calm down and as you become part of them and bring them into your realization, you become more evolved in some ways. Your energies become greater in some ways. Your mind becomes more awake in some ways because these energies are moving all through you and they are awakening things and they are tearing things away from you that do not belong to you if that's what you choose for them to do. And they are illuminating you. But you have to realize that after these energies or during these energies, that you have to realize that they are actually changing you and making you better. Uh, some people feel that they are, they are negative energies because they feel depression or fatigue or anger or whatever, but this is only the beginning that will fall away. There will be greater things that come from these energies 
And those particular things that you're feeling that are negative are releasing from you. They are releasing from you. You may say, oh, I was so angry. But they're starting to release from you because you do not want that. It is something that you knew in your, in your heart of hearts and mind of minds that you did not want. And so some people are feeling fatigue and anger and all these things, and they did not want these things. And so they're coming to the surface. And now you will start to shed them. It's been happening for a while now. But remember, you all have your own missions and your own light that must be shed in the world, shown in the world. And so in order for it to be shown properly, these things must leave. These things must be shed. And so the light can come out more clearly, more perfectly. And the light can be more felt within yourself. A lot of you are dealing with forgiveness for yourself. That you have not forgiven yourself completely. And so you're dealing with unforgiveness with lots of people. Or you may be feeling unforgiveness stored for no reason at all. And it is something that is coming to the surface so that you may deal with it. These energies will bring all your negativities to the surface. If you don't deal with it, then they will stay for a while. They will stay until you deal with them. And some of you will say, I, I don't know how to deal with them. And that is where meditation and asking God for some help will help you. Because you may say, God, I don't know why I'm feeling this way. I don't know why these things are coming to the surface. But I do need to deal with whatever it is. So find out what it is and deal with it. And you will be better off, happier. Oh, you still may have struggles in your life. It's not a cure-all. But the emotions within you will be purging. Those things that were negative within you will be purging out and helping you to discover a greater portion of the true you. Thank you. Have you yes. questions in your room? Yeah, there is a question here. Yes. Okay, we can't hear it unless they move a little bit yes. closer to the microphone. Yes, there is Dave Decker down okay. below the hill and he feels really dizzy. Can you figure out what's wrong? And I will go bring him here too. All right. All right. There is someone not feeling well, and there is healing energy here. The reason why he's feeling the dizziness is because he is still dealing with informations that he received yesterday that he has not absorbed into his system. And he is very much afraid of many things. And so he needs to purge that fear. And that is why he's feeling the way he is feeling. And that is what I was just talking about. These emotions will come up. They will show you that they are there and you must deal with them in a way that you, instead of trying to ignore them, you see, if you try to ignore them, then you'll be sicker. You'll feel worse. And that is what's happening. Because it, it's hard to deal with some of these things. It's hard to deal with some of these things. And, and it is, uh, everyone has some fears. And everyone has some regrets. And everyone has some negative emotions within them. But you understand they must be dealt with as you move forward. I know that you are all understanding what I'm saying because you all have those moments where you say, oh, I know I have to deal with that. I know I have to deal with that, but not right now. And so it continues to fester in your system. But God is going to let these energies continually bring them out until you're ready to deal with them and release them. 
because you have missions. You have places that you need to be. You have light that you need to shed on others. You have things that need to be said that cannot be said until the negativity is passed from you. Some of you have throat chakra problems right now, communication issues. Some people are going, I have, there's something wrong with my throat. I can't speak properly, or I feel pain in the throat area or in the, the heart area or in different chakra areas. You need to deal with that, whatever that is in those areas at this time. Because usually if it's a communication error or problem, it is something that you need to say or something that's not been said that needs to come out. And then that will actually help it. But some people need to actually know what it is that is going on before they can do anything about it. But when you realize that there are things that you need to say that you haven't said, it's a bright light, isn't it? It's a bright light that shines on you because you're going, I, I need to say that. I, I have to say that. That's what I need to do because in this situation, this is who I am and I have to express what I believe, how I feel, and not in a negative way, but not in a nasty way, but I must let them know that I am not like that. And they are looking at me like I am like that, but I need to straighten out that information. I need to let them know who I really am because they cannot treat me the same after they know that. Now, you may think, you may be saying, what is he talking about? There are some of you that go into a workplace every day and they push you into a, a cubicle or a place where you are not really yourself, that you are not really being your own person. You need to be your own person and you need to tell them if there are things that you do not agree with. It may be difficult. It does not mean you will lose your job, but you must say, I'm sorry, I feel this way because this is who I am. Is there something we can do to work this out? Is there something we can do to work this out? because many of you are miserable because you cannot be yourself in the workplace. Or wherever you go that makes you miserable, you're not being yourself. And that is why you're miserable. It's not that so-and-so is being mean to me. It's not that so-and-so is doing this and that. It's that you haven't been yourself and said what you needed to say. It is because you have not stood up for yourself, or you have not let them know who you really are. And that may not help the situation to tell them, but at least they know. And at least you can feel honest about who you are in that situation. Does that make sense to you? Many of you will feel less miserable being your true self instead of trying to fit in where you really don't belong. Thank you. Is there any other questions in your room? I do not think so. Okay. Maybe I should pass the mic to someone else. All right. We don't have any questions on our side as well. Thank you. Blessings to you all. And I will bring someone else. We love you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Blessings. Mm. 
Uh, um. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Grindel. One moment, please. Yeah. Hi. I'm Grindel, if you don't know. Yeah. How can I help you? They called me, so I had to come. <laughs> no, well, I never people are in the chat are sending love to you. So. Yeah, I never pass up an invitation. Or I try not to. Now, I know there's a lot of questions out there about a lot of different things, but um, I wanted to say that I know some of you are very direct and I say exactly what's on my mind and, and that's all well and good, but sometimes I do have to be diplomatic. <laughs> And uh, where I'm working right now, I was listening to Elijah and the person that I walk into to do this job in Israel is sometimes not himself because he's me. And the thing is about that is he's allowing information and uh, allowing communication that he couldn't do on his own to pass through. And I wanted to clarify something with everyone. There are those people that, for whatever reason, to keep peace and to keep communications positive, cannot always say what they want to say. Now, that's contradictory to the other guy, but I want to explain it. There are certain very delicate situations. I know you will know what they are. Um, and there's other situations that they're not so delicate. So um, you have to discern by praying but ahead of time how you are to act in certain situations. Don't just barge in and say whatever you think you need to say, but prepare yourself. Prepare yourself for for your confrontations, even if they're loving ones. You must prepare yourself for those. Family and friends and even workers and bosses and things, you have to prepare ahead of time and say, look, I have to, I really must uh, talk to this guy, but I have no idea what I'm gonna say. Please help me. And you may, it may take a little while before you feel confident enough to do that. And that's all right, but at least you're preparing for it. At least you're, you're starting to make some move toward the right. Do you know what I'm saying? And sometimes when you're preparing, you may find out, oh, I, I'm going about this all the wrong way. <laughs> Hey, that happens to me a lot. <laughs> but um, you may find out that you are preparing wrong or and God may talk to you about how you should prepare or something you should do to maybe help break the ice or that talk or something you should maybe bring up that could lead into that conversation. And so therefore it won't be so awkward if they bring something up and then you can comment on it. Be wise, use wisdom whenever you're confronting others. Use wisdom and love and preparation. That's all I wanted to really say. Is there any questions for me out there? Yes, uh, David has a question for you. Yeah. Oh, hey, Grindel, sorry. how are you? Good, good, how are you? Great, thanks for coming. Oh, you're welcome. I was actually wondering about people's personal dragons. Why, like, Draxillian, I believe, is the race? Yeah. Why do they attach themselves to people, and how can you use them, like, to benefit yeah. both of them? Oh, well, let me explain the relationship between dragons and people from the beginning. You see, first of all, dragons looked at people as food. 
So that was the first, that was the very earliest relationship between man and dragon. And then the cities used to use sacrifices to keep the dragons at peace. They used to send someone out to be food for the dragons so that they would be peaceful. And this started a different kind of relationship between dragons and humans. Dragons are starting to say, hey, these humans aren't so bad. They fixed lunch for me. So, and they're, or they're saying, uh, you know, they're, they're sacrificing one of their own. They might not be so bad after all. It took centuries to think, to start to actually become interested in a friendship with humanity, but the, it did happen. It did happen. After a while, the dragons started to refuse the sacrifices and say, let's talk. They talk to the sacrifice. They talk to this person. They wanted to know something about them. They said, why are you here? Why are you letting me eat you? Why is it that that's happening? I'm starting to feel guilty about it. And it's true, they did. They started to feel guilty about eating people because the people would be going, no, don't eat me. And he's going, well, you were given to me. Um, I started to feel obligated. But after a while, they started to say, you know, I'm really not really so hot on this. We have all these other animals we can eat. Uh, why? I know humans are a little tastier in some ways, but... Hey, can we just give them up for a little while? I, I, I really sort of like that last person that I ate. Uh, they were, uh, they were sort of nice, you know. Um, but um, it, there became a relationship eventually, and and you you have movies nowadays in your land where humans and dragons get along. Yeah, uh, I forget the name of them, but <laughs> there are some. Ah, there you go. But um, yeah, so they became friends after a while. And so they started um, talking to the humans from a distance. We're not coming to eat you anymore. And the, and the humans had parties and cheered. And that, but yet they would show up to watch the party. <laughs> and everybody be afraid. Uh, but they they just were watching. And then there was a few brave souls that, uh, you know, they there were many in the past <coughs> that tried to slay the dragons. But that stopped as well. I need water. <coughs> but... They did become friends, and this is how the relationship started. Can I ask uh, one thing? Um, one second. We've lost the video. If someone on your side can maybe work on that while you're answering. Thank you. You lost me? Yes. They lost the video. <laughs> Where's the mask? But go ahead, Grendel. Not to interrupt. Go ahead. All right. So they became friends, and also af there were uh, times after death where then spirit guides became draconians or, or humans became spirit guides of draconians. And so mm -hmm. whenever you get a spirit guide that is a draconian or a draconian gets a spirit guide that's a human, this is a different kind of guidance. <clears throat> and now you find that they can align spiritually. Spiritually, all creatures can align. And so it is not so hard to understand at this point why there are dragons as very close spirit guides, and friends.
Is the Drasilian race, is that the same as dragon or is that like alpha draconian? Like, are you mixing those together or am I? Yeah, confusing? there's a little difference there. There's, there's a lot of different draconian species and races. So yes, there are some differences. Okay. There's the white dragons so, of the North. There's the brown dragons under, you know, blah, blah, blah. Continue. I was just thinking, uh, when like they were physical at one point and now they're etheric. Yes, yes. So mm -hmm, yes. like I I recognize that I have three dragons, but I don't know the purpose of them or why they're with me or any of that kind of information. Um, that is for you to find out and for them to tell you. I cannot I cannot really go there and uh, uh change all that protocol for you because the protocol is that they must explain themselves to you and you must listen to the information given. Now, you may have to have them channeled for you. You may have to uh, get in their auric fields or something. But um, at this point, yes, it's up to them and you to form that relationship. And it will be a positive one and strong one. Okay. Thank you so much, Grendel. You're welcome. All right. I just there's came a question. Very, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, there's a question from in the chat um, that is asking, and let me just get back to it because it now has disappeared. Uh, the question yeah. is, um, what is the what is the impact that light languages are going to have on the world? Oh, incredible! The light languages are also. Some of the light languages are alien languages. These are being given to people for first contact reasons. There will be many different species coming after first contact. And some of these light languages will be able, uh, some people will be able to speak to aliens and make them feel more welcome with their light language. Now, having said that, there will come a point where many will start to understand their light languages so that when they intend to say something, the light language will go to that particular person and tell them exactly what they are intending to say. That light language are designed to work with intention. And if you are... Um, uh, it will come to a point after a while also that you'll start to hear the light language from someone else and your intent is to understand what they're saying and it will be understood. Now, there will be training on these later after first contact. All right, thank you. Um, there's also a question that says um, it's from the it's from the YouTube channel and, and it, it's from Christy C. And she says, "Does the Queen of the Draco want to make peace with the Pleiadians and GFOL? I don't know what that is. Uh, will the peace treaty be positive for humans? I guess it's Gerfignir um, that she's um, referring to. Oh well, um, well." The Galactic Federation of Light is what she meant. Oh, thank GFOL. you. Thank you. I didn't know what she was saying. Thanks. Um, yeah, it just came to me. But anyway, um, <laughs> yes, there will be peace. There will be peace uh, because there needs to be peace. If there's a time right now between those particular species uh, that is a long uh, line of dissension, but it, there will be peace. That's all I can say. I cannot moderate it for them or do it for them, but there will be peace. And the queen is understanding the, with the use of the, the uh, Galactic Federation of Light. All right, perfect. Thank you for that. Um, I don't have any questions on this side. Do you have any questions within the room for... And your yeah, video is back, here, by yeah. the way. The video is back, by the way. What? The video oh. is back. We can see you again. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, what happened to the dragons on this earth? Most of them are subterranean at this point. 
But some of them have left your planet to go back to their home worlds or whatever. But you still have at least three areas on this the planet with large draconian subcultures, uh, subterranean cultures. The white dragons of the north, the brown dragons under England, the English Channel and uh, France in there. And the, uh, the they are sort of the red dragons are over and the Chinese and uh, Japanese and Vietnam areas, Korea, all that, uh, they're, they're sort of negative. So there's the, the good, the medium, sort of neutral, and then you have your negative ones. But they're not in great, great populations on your planet. So keep that in mind. They're rather large beings, and so they need a lot of subterranean area, area to survive. But... There is quite a bit under there, but they are, um, some of them have left the planet, yeah. There are other small uh, places subterraneanly that there are dragon, dragon cultures, but those are the three biggest. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. Yeah, I have a okay. Can you repeat the question from your room? Because we can't hear it. Oh, you have, to, you have to come here. They say you can't. They, uh, they're coming over to the mic. Yes. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> so my question is um, yes. about protection. I know. I I want to understand because I don't think I get it. I know that you are protecting me, and I, I know that you save me from some. Um, negative entity correct in my room yes but at the same time there is something else happened before when <clears throat> i was attacked during by this being uh sylvester during roxanne's um channel uh, channeling yeah and i ended up deeply depressed for that day and then well until today uh, it, he gave me Nasal infection. Um, well, you have to understand something. How does it work? Well, I can't be there ever, all, all the time because I have a job to do in yeah. uh, Israel too. So there are times that I can be there and, and protect you. But I af if there was somebody there that attacked you when I wasn't there, I can come and help to correct that and, and help you get out of it. So, um, or recover from it so that's what i'm doing is the best i can for you and several others so it may not be a hundred percent protection but it is as yes. best as i can do i understand but i you're not i have higher self i have oh yes higher. there's other protectors but you have to call on them but some of these things are third dimensional things that just have you have to go get through okay. they um Nobody's going to have a perfect life and nobody's going to have all positivity. And there will be negative attacks to every single person. And that we can't stop because it just needs to be there for some of the lessons and some of the things that need to happen. But um, I, I want to speak to everybody when I say this is everybody has some protection that, it, that works in the light worker field. Everybody in the light worker field has some protection and you feel it like this guy has angels around him and and, she, and so does she and she has Native American Indians helping her, you know, other things. You have dolphins helping you. Yeah. Okay. There, there are those people that are helping different people because they are closely aligned to their energies. And so I'm closely aligned to your energy. So that's why I can help you the best. Many of you out there have other beings or whatever helping you that you are <coughs> more closely aligned to. Yeah. You got Thank it? You so much. Yes. Yes. I love, you. love you. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I can't here hear has you. A Oh, go ahead. We can't hear you. Oh, there's so. enough. Uh, come Perfect. over here because they won't hear you if they. Uh, there's one in the room, and then we'll go to Sheer. Perfect. Thank you. I'm from Venezuela, and I'd like to know why so much negativity 
It's like a different country now when I used to live there. Yes. And I moved when I was 14 um, to another country. Um, I wonder when I went back to visit, it's not a country I used to live. It, why so much negativity in Venezuela? Well, is there? There is so, well, it is a center of a, a drug trafficking for one, one thing. The Colombia, Venezuela, all those areas are filled with drug traffickers. And that's a very negative business because it's for the destruction of mankind and not for the bringing up of mankind. So you have uh, a very bad element that is there that really people are afraid of and they have really instilled a lot of fear in the people around that. And that's changed the whole attitude of the country because they're afraid of, of these different drug traffickers because if you get in their way, you're gone. So um, it has changed the attitude and, and, and the fear, uh, fear of the country and it needs to change. What kind of beings, aliens, is in, in that area? In that area, there's a lot of reptilians now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. And, all right. Any more? Sheer. Sheer, yes. Hey, Grindo. Grindo, here, yeah. So we speak about dragons, my favorite animal. I uh -huh. didn't know that. It's actually the first animal that I knew about when I... Even before dogs and stuff like that, I knew about dragons. And then Nivi told me they aren't real and uh, broke my heart. But uh, my question is... They're real. They're real. But they weren't real to humans at the time because humanity is uh, looks at them as uh, a legendary kind of creature. There's stories about them in the water, in the in the air and the eating you and blah, blah, blah. But it's been thousands and thousands of years since that's been true. So that's why it seems like it's not true anymore, but it's just something from the distant, distant past. Yeah, but d d by that you're saying that all the dragons, all the stories about dragon, uh, alien species that came here none of the dragons were like breathing fire having wings and stuff like that or they're also dragons well, as animals and not as a race well actually i don't know of any dragons that actually blew fire uh they had their breath was very toxic and it it did throw out sulfur and different things of that nature. And you could actually see the smoke and stuff. And it was sort of a red orange color that came out. So some would say so in some languages and vocabularies, fire was the only word that was close to describing what they saw. So it wasn't really actually fire that they were breathing, but a sort of a sulfuric, uh, uh, smoky kind of thing. So, but you have to understand ancient languages, they didn't have words for everything. They, for fire, that was the, they had a word for fire, but not for orange smoke. So, so they use fire instead. I see. And two quick questions. Me and Nivi want to go to Dharmasala, India, and it's me yeah. said that there's a, a woman dragon there, a, a female dragon. In, a well, dragon? She's, she's in human form, but they call her dragon woman, but she does have the, uh, she does have the essence of uh, draconians in her, yes. Ah, but she, she does not look like a dragon. Ah, uh, she can't turn to a dragon if we will ask her? No. Nah, well, we'll talk about that later, but no, not really. She can demonstrate some features of a dragon being, but she cannot actually turn into a dragon. I see. And last question. I also was visited by three 
uh, dream lords that were draconians so i want to understand if i have any connection to dragons reptilians something in that area your connections are more to um another area of the galaxy but you are connected with all species because of who you are so you will have visitations from all kinds of species but your native remulac family is is your your base but you are friends with many many species Mm, okay well thank you very much and hopefully we could eat right. in sometime here okay no, uh, um, thank you barbara maples has a question barbara yeah my barbara okay she's asking me to ask for her let me just okay go back to her question really yeah. quick um mm. i have to i have to scroll up i think yeah Murray. sorry <laughs> Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Um, I I can't find your question now. Oh. <laughs> they they chat in the chat and then okay, I see it. Can you ask Grendel about a connection she felt this morning um, with the inner Earth beings that looked like Aztecs, or was this something else? Thank you. Her mic yeah, that's working. something else. That's something else altogether. That's not related to um, draconians at all. Not at all. Uh, although they live in similar subterranean kinds of uh, places, that's a totally different species, and they have no connection. Okay. There um, is another question from Liliana. Liliana. Okay, Liliana, come to the mic so we can hear come you. Come to the mic. Come to the mic. I just want to know. Come to the mic. Yes. I just want to know what kind of reptilian I I have a um, you have some in you, but it's not not pure. So you have uh, a mix of hybrid reptilian in you, uh, draconian in you, with a little bit of reptilian. So, so that's um, we'll talk about that later because uh, that's an interesting combination. Uh, you have to come over here because they can't hear you. Yeah. Oh. What connection do I have to the snakes? Oh, the, the uh, snakes um, yeah, the um, Naga people. Yeah. You have a connection with them because you want to learn how to speak their language and communicate with animals. And they're the ones that can help you with that. They can help you to get closer to a true connection mentally with speaking to animals and that's what you're really after now you have feline in you also well you don't have the snake in you they just want to help they're the naga people and um but you have feline in you that is also trying to help you with that connection to animals the reason that you need to connect to animals is because you will need to be a communication uh, between them to tell them about what humans really are doing and what they're really up to. <coughs> they don't understand any of this ascension stuff. So you need to let them know that it's a positive thing. You don't have to describe it. You just have to let them know about positivity and which people are positive and who to listen to and who to connect with. <coughs> yeah, that's what. So the Naga people are the snake people. Yes. So you will, they will connect with you. Yeah. Okay. Can someone give uh, uh, Jim or Grendel a glass of water there? So he's, yeah. So he can uh, dry that yeah. throat up <laughs> or, clear, or clear that dry throat. Well, I think I'm about ready to go anyway. Are you okay? Okay. All I'm right. Passing them. I'll see you. There's no more questions, right? I have some few questions, but we can take wait, it to wait, the there person. There is a question. In, hold on. There's a question in the room here. Okay, perfect. What is it? Who is, uh, okay. Could you elaborate on your job in Israel? Oh, yeah. A little bit. I can't really uh, go into it. 
it's sort of uh they don't really know which person i am when i walk it but i have a middle management in government job at, at least the human that i work with has a job and we are trying to get information to the higher realms of the government i see i knew a long time ago about the switches of the uh ambassador the 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 capital and all that that just recently happened i knew about that well before it was going to happen i had to soften the blow of that in in many ways because it would have caused great deals of trouble if it would have just suddenly happened but i let them know i let them know as as in internal information that it was going to happen and a couple other things that i had to let them know as well that i cannot discuss with you here but it made things a lot less uh dangerous but still the israel nation is a key to war in the middle east and i am there to try to keep that at bay as best as possible well, thank you yeah Grindel, we have one i cannot question. tell you who i am <laughs> grindle we do have one more question if that's okay yes okay uh Kronlick wants to know he said would the spaceships designed by humans in science fiction movies really be able to fly and he, and he goes he noticed that most et vehicles are simple in design <laughs> <laughs> yes. He wants us to know who designs design, his Go ahead. They took their yeah. design from what they saw in the air. So most of them would be able to fly to some degree, but the modern, the more uh the more uh modern designs are much more aerodynamic and can manipulate and move around much better than those old saucer kind of ships. Now those saucer ships um, came from a different galaxy and they actually folded space to get them here and they were like little taxis. They really weren't meant to be uh, overly complex. They were just simple, just to move around the solar system. Uh, but to get to the solar system, space was folded so that they could, they didn't have to go long distance in these tiny little craft. So, uh, which they considered tiny. Also, space travel is way more dangerous than you can possibly imagine. There's gas uh, places where you can't see and there's all kinds of anomalies that can jump up and neutrino explosions are uh, incredibly powerful and even some um some of these um elements that are moving through space they can go right through the hull of a ship they can just pierce it and you're done um so folding space was much a, a much better way of traveling and then once they got here then they didn't need they didn't need a big ship they just needed something small to get around in like when you rent a car so so um yes so they some of those old ships are very just designed for puttering around the solar system and not for deep space travel there are things made for deep space travel but you will they're immense Many of them are immense in size and mm -hmm. go much faster than you could possibly imagine. He has the second but part of the question. Oh, sorry, yes. sorry. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. He has the second part of the question they about. They could fly. Yeah. They <laughs> he has the second fly. part of the question. All right. He has a second part of the question that is uh, who designs the cesspot, cesspod, Z E S. POD ships and how are they made basically? The Zespod ships, that would be my home planet ships. Um, I'm a Zespod reptilian. And so yes, they they um the the people on our planet 
don't really like space travel very much. They do it for ambassadorships to other worlds. They do it for here and there, but they never vacation off the planet, never. So um, it's just the culture. That's the way the culture is. But they do have space travel and it is built by the governments. And the governments have uh, more of these spherical kinds of ships that are deep red or deep magenta sometimes. Uh, those are the kinds of ships they use because they are easier to control than anything with uh, a, 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 other kinds of dimensions. A sphere is very easy to control aerodynamically. So, um, and it can move very quickly in all directions without having to change rudders and doing all that stuff. So the spherical ship is what our people use because it just works for us the best. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm. is that it? I'm going to go for now because there's one more that wants to come. No, go ahead and go. And we've got questions, but they'll come to, they can go to the next one. Yeah, Thank you, Greg, yeah all right. Um, sorry, everybody, but I, I, I really have to go. It's you so you're, you're welcome. Love you. Love you. Bye. Don't tell my people I say that. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, because they don't understand. They just, they don't get that. All right. All right. Have a great day. Thank you. Namaste. Greetings, I am Gabriel. Greetings, Gabriel, thank you. I had to come today for the energy here is of a magnitude that needs addressing. Keep this kind of energy between you and you will always know that you are on the right path. An angelic energy is something that cannot be experienced all the time, but can be experienced some of the time. I would like to share with you some of that energy because I think some of you need a little more uplifting. Not in this room. But out there, this room seems to be pretty favorable and positive. Pretty happy and balanced, at least for the moment. And I'm happy to be here with you. Is there any questions for me? I am just here to send out a, an energy to you that you may experience that you need for your edification, for your upbringing, for your building up. Because some of you have come from low, low places and are now starting to discover greater heights, greater beauty, Greater love. Hmm. Uh, Sheer has a question, please. Ah, Sheer. Hey, Gabriel. How are you? I am wonderful. It's so weird. Before the webinar, I had a feeling that you might show up, and I remembered that 
last time we spoke, you said that next time you will have um, a message for me next time we'll speak. And today I just thought about, hey, maybe today is going to come. Something just clicked. There is a message for you. And that all your hard work is going to pay off. And I know what you're thinking. You're going to say, ah, oh, but it didn't. <laughs> but it did. And it is moving forward. There are things that are happening with you now that are very evident, that are part of your future mission. Can you see that? Um, maybe in the making, but not something I truly doing in my daily life. Where are you going soon? No, I'm I'm speaking about that whatever I study, I don't think it, that is going to be my mission, but there are stuff that I'm doing in my free time that I think it's more about my mission. Gathering Correct. certain <laughs> soul. And there is somewhere that you're going to be going soon that will also open your eyes to some things. But maybe you don't even know you're going there yet. <laughs> but that is all right. That is all right. There are many messages for you and many messages for many that are very positive at this time. Thank you very much. There is a question, please come. Gabriel, I'm Pam. Greetings. Hello, and love from my heart. Um, is there a, a message for me that can help others? Because I feel that I have many directions. Uh, so I'm trying to focus. I'm getting glim glimpses of following my bliss. But right now, I, I feel a little there are, stalled out. Let me tell you this. You have more than one talent, and you have more than one higher excitement. Do not limit yourself to one, but you must use them all. For God says that you are talented, and that one will interact with the other, and they will work together, and all become part of one great mission. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Good. I hope that helps others. Thank you. You're welcome. Keep shining. Hi. Just so you know, we have the, the video has gone out again, um, but we can still hear you just fine. That is fine. Okay. Um, the, Lila has a question on our side. We have two questions in this room. Uh, there, the video is back. Perfect. Um, Lila has a question, and then Marlene. Yes. Hi. Hi, Gabriel. Greetings. Greetings. I uh, find out that I am a mother to several angels. And could you tell me the names, if it's, if it's legal? <laughs> At this time, that would be saved for a personal time, for not everyone should know this. OK, that makes sense. Um, I am getting, uh, inf I, I got information that I am connecting to Agartha. Would that exactly mean that the Agartian energy is coming to me? Who is coming? And could you tell me something about this Agartha and me? They um, are, they have a mission to bring light to the world. They have a mission that is very positive and they are going to make themselves known shortly because they live on the earth and under the earth and they are just letting people know that they are ready to be a part of disclosure and people will start to see them in different places and they wanted to let you know since you are someone that is very verbal and has communication skills to others that they will be coming forth. OK, 
Okay. Can you tell me who I am connected? Uh, the last question: Who I am connected to Agartha? What exactly being I am connected to? The Agartha that you are connected to is Mas Sienti. Who is that? Mas Mas Sienti, Sienti, Mas Sienti, and that is. The one that you are connected to. That's who it is. Oh, perfect. Uh, how does he look? Like an Elgarfin. Ah. But oh, you could be a politician. Can... Yes. <laughs> oh no, my dear. <laughs> I could never talk to the people that way. <laughs> But you will find out more. Your connection is actually fairly strong, isn't it? I, I don't have a clue, actually. It will get stronger. Okay. Do not worry. I will get the clue. Thank you. Remember the name, though, so that you can call on your friend. OK, I will. I will, I will write it down. Thank good. you. Good. Very good. Thank you. And uh, Marlene has a question. Marlene. Adonai, Gabriel. Oh, wonderful. My uh, question. What did you say? Pardon me? It's hard to hear you. Uh, you were a little loud and it, it was a, a little blurry. Oh, I go said, ahead. Okay. I said Adonai. Oh, yes, I understand. Concerning uh, our last meeting, um, yes. which I attended, um, and as a follow-up, uh, what info do you have for me uh, personally uh, in regards to my mission here, please? Well, you have most of your information already. I don't know if I can add to it too much, but you are a bright light and that's part of your mission, to hold the light and to be part of the light, to move forward, to heal many in, in different ways. What other things do you need to know? Specifics in regards to travels on the planet ah you I'm sorry, there is no sound. I cannot hear you at all. I accidentally muted uh, Jim. Can someone please unmute him on on his side? Sorry about that. I was I heard some feedback. I thought it was coming from Max's other. So sorry, Gabrielle. Good. There we go. Thank you. This is a sign that I am not supposed to tell you what is personal to you. We will speak again, but that was no accident. Yeah. I've never muted Mac and Jim ever in the entire all the webinars I've hosted. I've never muted you once. So. No, that was that was a motion from God saying that I had not to say what I was starting to say, but I do it was stopped. I'm sorry, but that is not to be in to be told in front of all these people. Thank you. Sorry for that. There is a question in the room. Last night we were at dinner and a picture was taken. And within the picture were, were two, the two whiteouts. Was that, was that angelic? It was angelic to show that there is much intervention with angels here. Sedona at this time has a large angelic population. And always has, but right now it's slightly larger. 
There is a question from Dave. Uh, he is a little better, but he asks, mm -hmm. he still has a lot of uh, physical symptoms. Uh, he asks, how long sh will it last? How long will what? The physical symptoms last? Uh, he does. Did you eat anything yet today? One moment, please. You should start feeling better any time now. In fact, you will feel perfect within a half hour. You are welcome. There is no need for you to feel ill. Your negativity and fear is what causes the illness. So just take a very deep breath and blow out as far as you can as much of this negativity that within you as you can. There was something that was bothering you. And now do not let it bother you any longer. Next one. Be of good cheer. You are healing already. Yes. Come forward. Um, I'm trying to connect with my spirit guide. No. Hi, so. Yes. But somehow I go to the angels and then I feel guilty because It I'm is trying. possible so that your I, spirit guides are angels, or at least one of them. Okay. And when the angels come, they have specific words for you. They have specific guidance for you because you are one that needs to find them in a great way. They have an energy for you that you have not yet experienced. You are a little afraid of it. You admit that, correct? Yes. And they are wanting to grant you this experience because you need this uplifting for your purpose to be able to shine out this kind of energy to others. You are blessed. But yet, you do not feel it or think that you are not. Correct. So you will now find that you will grow. Let us all help you. One with another, with another. We will all grow together with you. Much love. Thank you. You're welcome. There is a special energy for you to come. Yes, and you know that you knew that it was coming, didn't you? But you just stopped it so many times. True. Yes. Is there any more questions? Ah, come closer. What a blessing it is to speak with you in this way again, uh, Gabriel. Thank you. Uh, my question is, could you uh, talk about the geometries of consciousness that could support us, our well-being, uh, and other people in our environment? The geometries of consciousness. I'm not sure everyone understands what that means. Well, uh, things like the platonic solids, uh, the Tetrahedron, oh, yes. The different things that can add energy to your realm, to your life force, and to your being. Now, let me talk about that for a moment. The different symbols, different things that you bring into your life, stones and crystals, tetrahedrons, and things that have power for you. These are things that work with your belief systems, but they do have energy on their own. But in order for them to work properly, you must attach your belief system to them. Now, stones and crystals and things of this nature automatically work for you in some ways. But when you turn your attention to them and give them the attention that they deserve because they are God's creations, 
they work more properly when they are identified for what they are and identified for the energy that they can produce and bring to you. So these are things that can be intended also. You can, enchant, you can change the intention of a crystal a little bit, not completely. For as, let's call a rose quartz, a heart crystal, and it comes and works with the heart in a great way, but yet healing energy can be used from it as well. Love energy comes from it. Many things that, that you can intend for it will come from it if you so believe because God created it. Why can it not do these things? Why can it not bring forth the things that you desire? There is a scripture that says, if you need bread, will God give you a stone? No. He will bring to you what you need in your life. So if you need love, will he bring a sponge? No. He will bring the things that you need. Now, I like your question because there are many out there that use many different things to bring energies to them. The Tesla coil, the field generators, the stones, the quartz, the tetrahedrons, the, the pyramids, all these different things geometrically shaped to bring energy and power and life to an area. Why can they, why could they not heal you? They can. They can bring that energy to you. They can bring that life force to you. They can bring what you need to you in, in certain ways. But your belief system must be engaged. If you're looking at it as just an object, of course, there is some energy in it. You may be able to feel that energy. But if you don't believe that it's anything that's helpful, how can it help? You're refusing its help. Let it help. Let purity of food help. Let purity of crystals help. Let the purity of all the things that you intend to be helpful help you. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Please come forward. Thank you so much. I love being in your energy, by the way. I really do. Well, thank you. Thank you for talking to us. I have a, a question. I am in an on-off relationship for almost five years to, with a person who is a perfect reflection of my um, inner frustrations. My question is, if I finally leave this person, what's going to happen with him? Because I also take care of him in many ways. Is he going to be okay? He is going to realize the energy that you put forth to help him. But you see, right now it is about you at the moment. This relationship is not serving you well and it is actually causing you to be ill in some ways. If this happens, you must disconnect no matter what it does for him because you are not helping him when you are ill. You are not helping him if you are unhappy. You are not helping him if you are the one that is being destroyed. Now, he will realize what energies that you have given. 
He will realize what energies that are a part of you that you have shared. And perhaps this will help him more than hurt him to be disconnected. He will make realizations. He will bring thought processes into the forefront that may have been in the background that he needs to look at and be aware of. It seems like you are coddling him perhaps a little too much. And he needs to be cut free to let himself feel what it's like to be responsible for his own emotional well-being. This is impossible. It is. Okay. That helps other people out there too. Because they have similar relationships that are parasitic. And you should not have someone sucking the life out of you. You put it like 100%, not. That's not. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> Whenever there is someone out there being a parasite on you, to you, and removing your energy, you must take that relationship and separate yourself from it a distance so that you can analyze what is happening and see clearly what the relationship is. For you cannot see a parasite if they're under the skin. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Wow, that makes sense. Yes. Thank you so much. Are there any other questions in the room with Gabriel? Come forward. I was told two days ago that I'm supposed to channel some important information in the future. I'm wondering if you can give me any hints on to where from the universe those energies are going to be coming from. Yes. I want you to pray diligently that this information comes through pure and, and full of integrity. You are a wonderful and sensitive individual, and you are a great channeler and you have a future ahead of you. This will come from a spiritual place. This will come from a place of high integrity and great love. But you are not ready for it quite yet to come to you because you are questioning why you, in a way. You are ready for it. You are ready for it whenever you know that you are. Your love is intact, and you absolutely know that you do not want to deceive people. And you absolutely know that information that will come from you in the future will be purer than it has come in the past. And remember, Many times before something becomes authentic, before people realize how valuable something is, sometimes they put it aside. Don't let that bother you. Don't let that put you down. But let that say to you, the right time is coming. And you will bloom when the bud is ready. Be well. This information is coming, but not quite yet. How are you feeling, David? He is releasing the gas that is within. Are you all right? 
yes, he is feeling starting to feel better. Okay. We have one more question on our side, and then we are coming to the end. So maybe this will be the last question. Very well. What is the question? Leela. Okay, I have a last question. Uh, there is an ancient Egypt history, what I discover, that is Nubia and Kush. That is the lower part of Egypt. So what is not really recorded and not really that well known to us humans, what is my connection to that part of Africa, Sudan today? Your connection is that you had a life back then, but you were also uh, in a servantship to many of the great leaders of that time. And the reason is to be a great follower is to become a great leader. And you had to do some interesting following in servantships so that your leadership will be intact and perfect and bring about the greatest amount of effect when it comes into fruition. So can you say that the pharaoh, pharaoh's line came from Sudan, Nubia? Is that the beginning of the pharaoh dynasties in the lower Egypt? Sudan and Nubia, it was not called that at that time, but it is, in the right place. Did the pharaoh yeah. came from Nubia, Sudan? Original? The first original ones did. The later ones came from the sky. The Anunnaki. I would not want to put a label on all the different species that were part of that culture, but some of them were, yes. All right. Okay, that's it. Thank you. You're welcome. If you have no other questions in your room, Gabriel, then we are about five minutes from being up on time. I will say a prayer for you in closing then. And I will use the angelic languages. Fia son zuriata, mati kashovo de adonaya, moshunwa, ankiravoria, son zovoti, alian geo on sila, moshkuria sundakala, alleluria kadu una, mieshkevuta aushumba. Roma sonzivi fore manatsuta. Blessings to all of you and to this era. There are many secrets that will be revealed within a short period of time in the next several years that are important for the survival of this planet and for the movement forward of all those that work in the light. Be of good cheer, for God is with you, and God is illuminating your path. Stay in the light, and all will be well. There will be many troubles in the earth, but you do not have to be a part of them in some ways. If you keep your soul and heart, mind in the light, you will move through them much easier and much more quickly. Much love to you as you move forward and gain the truth that is needed for your missions and the light that is needed for the illumination of the world at hand. Many blessings. Many blessings. Thank you very much, Gabriel. It's always an honor to speak with you. Hello. Hello, welcome back. 
Water, water, water. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. We thank you. Yeah. How was your experience? Well, it's it's very strong here. <clears throat> I feel a lot of energy here. Yeah, it's very good. Good. All right, very good. Thanks. <laughs> a lot of beautiful angelic and uh, heavenly information coming through from some beautiful ascended masters and as well as Grendel <laughs> and then Grendel. <laughs> yeah, you. And then there was Grindel. <laughs> <laughs> the middle management guy. I love when he says that. <laughs> yes, and then there was. Yeah. Huh? I wonder who he's working with. He's I, been I, working in Israel for a long yeah, time now. Um, <laughs> so I don't know who exactly he's working with. Probably the cabinet. Israeli cabinet. Yeah, it's Paul. I don't know. Yeah, he won't say exactly. Israeli cabinet, won't it? Yeah. So, so we had a all right, situation. A, oh, sorry, go ahead. Any, anybody out there have a final blessing and then we'll go. Anyone in the room want to do a blessing? Come and do a blessing. Okay, perfect. Anyone in the Google hey, room? Hey, you going to do one. Okay. okay. Come around. Come around so they can see you. I can't see you, but they can. Okay. Ah, let the heavens fall, but with light and love. Gather up all that you find that is positive around you. And do not let the negativity win out. For your light is stronger than you believe it is. And it will continue to shine and be an example to the world. Blessings to all. What? All right. Anybody Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You. Have a great day. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Karen. I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. And if you would like to be a member of Human Colony, you just go to hucolo.org. You can be in the room on the paid webinar. So that's hucolo.org. So we'll see you all next week. And uh, yeah, have a wonderful time there in Sedona. Oh, thank you. We're thank having you. a great time, actually. All right. Well, hello to everyone. All right. Give hi to Danny. Up. There he is, Danny. Hi. Hey, get right. hey Danny. Oh, great. Good to see you. Cool. cool. Have fun. All righty right. then. Thank you. Wow.